Hey everyone, Brady from TextureLabs.org here back in Adobe After Effects for some sci-fi glowing green monitor effects. If that sounds familiar, you may have seen the Photoshop version last month. You don't need to have seen that video, but Photoshop is a good place to point out some key concepts. So I'll probably include a few clips of the important stuff, but this of course wants to be a video effect. Now, two ways to do this. One, join me for the next 20 minutes on a perilous adventure through space, time, and expressions in After Effects. It's a little tricky, but it does pay off with a very very, very cool effect. Second way to do this, the easy way, I built a supercharged template version of this project with a custom controller right here on top. You can put any footage or animation below these layers and then use this controller to really customize everything, including 15 different pixel styles to create all kinds of different looks. I'll link to that below. You could download it for just a couple bucks on the Texture Lab site, but it is a really cool project to build. Let's get into After Effects and check it out. All right, I'm here in After Effects and I'm getting started with an animation that I already built. Doesn't look all that sophisticated when you see it by itself, but that's one of the great things about this monitor effect. It can kind of hide the rough edges and elevate your janky looking special effects. But I'll give you a quick breakdown of how I built this. I took this piece of footage, used the roto brush to create a mat for him and the camera tracker so I could put in a camera and these big 3D planes in the background. Then on these planes, I put some animated texture in and type to create this illusion of movement, tracked in a few elements on the goggles and gave him the solarized effect using Colorama, used a tint effect to kind of strobe up and down and make it look like shadows moving across him, a little bit of glow happening, and here we are. So a couple things I'll mention about this composition I'm working in. It's HD 1920 by 1080 and it is 24 frames per second. I really like how this effect looks at 12 frames per second, but rather than building the composition at an unusual frame rate, I'm going to keep this at 24 and I'll just use the posterized time effect over everything at the end and that'll kind of convert it to 12 frames per second. But while I'm working on the project, I'm just going to keep the preview set to skip one frame. So we're effectively previewing every everything at 12 frames per second. Now, this effect gets built as a couple of adjustment layers and things on top, so you don't necessarily need to pre-render things or even pre-comp things. This could just be a whole bunch of animated layers down here, but this way I'm going to start with a nice minimal setup. Okay, let's get started. First thing I'm going to do is create some glitchiness. So I'm going to create an adjustment layer and call it Pixelate Displacement Effect and give it the Displacement Map Effect and displacement map needs some kind of a layer for it to reference. So I'm gonna create a solid layer and we'll call it pixelate displacement reference and give this one some fractal noise. And first I'm gonna take the complexity down to just two. This can be a pretty simple effect. The noise type is gonna be block and I'll crank the contrast way up to about 960 and take the brightness down to negative 525. Then in the transform controls, I'm gonna turn off uniform scaling so we can scale the width and height separately. I'll leave the width at 100, but take the height down to 25. Then let's animate it with just a simple expression on the random seed value. So I'm gonna alt click or option click on this little stopwatch and in the expression field type time times 100. And that'll give us a new random fractal noise on every frame. Then rather than this being black with this light colored noise in here, I want the whole thing to be 50% gray and I want the noise to give us both some lighter values and some darker values. So what I'm gonna do is offset the color of this layer. I'm gonna use this effect called PS Arbitrary Map and this just has one dial and if I turn it around to 180 degrees, we've basically just shifted all the color on the layer. Okay, let's bring the opacity on this layer to zero since it's just a reference. And then back here on the displacement map effect, I'll point this to the displacement reference, being sure to use effects and masks. So the reason for making that layer mostly gray is that the gray values will have zero displacement while anything darker or lighter will get displaced. So without that PS arbitrary map, everything is getting offset. But with the base color as gray, we're just getting those details being displaced. And here I'm only gonna use horizontal displacement. So I'm gonna take the vertical to zero, but crank the horizontal way up to 800. 
Okay, one more thing on this effect. I'm gonna add a solid composite effect and I'm gonna set it to black. Now that's kind of a preventative measure. Sometimes displacement map will displace the alpha channel and wrapping pixels around can sometimes help, but it can also give you weird results. So I'd rather just composite this with black and it might save us a headache later. Okay, there we go. We've got some cool glitchiness happening and let's move into making it pixelated. Now, I do wanna convey how the effect functions rather than just giving you a recipe. Like I mentioned, did this in Photoshop last month. Some of you guys probably saw that video. So let's do an abbreviated recap because it really is the same principles at work. The way this works is we're gonna create a mosaic effect and then we're gonna overlay this special pattern tile in a way that lines up exactly with the mosaic tiles. Now I say overlay, but it's probably not the best choice of words because we're not gonna use overlay blending mode. We're gonna use hard mix blending mode, a very key part of the process because like overlay and vivid light and the other contrast blending modes, it cranks up the contrast. However, hard mix cranks up the contrast so high that when you're combining black and white and gray values, it's gonna output completely 100% black and 100% percent white values. So it basically becomes a threshold effect. So this particular pattern tile is designed to be used set to hard mix as the color of the underlying layer gets brighter. Each of these gray boxes in the pattern at a certain point will cross that threshold from being black to being white. This pattern works well as a demonstration, but in the Photoshop video, we then swapped out this pattern for one that's a little bit softer and creates a slightly more organic effect, but it basically works the same. And this is the pattern tile we'll be using here in After Effects. Of course, if that was all a little bit too fast, you can always check out that Photoshop video and it probably does a little bit better job explaining. But let's get to building this here in After Effects. So we'll start with an adjustment layer and I'll call it Pixelate Mosaic Control. And I'm gonna add a slider on here that we can use to control the size of the pixels. So here in the Expression Controls Effects, I'll just add a slider and rename it. We'll call it Block Size. Now this of course doesn't do anything by itself, but we can link uh, an effect or multiple effects to the slider and control them all with the slider. So let's add an actual effect, the Mosaic Effect. So right out of the gate, Mosaic functions a little bit differently in After Effects than it does in Photoshop. Unless you happen to be in a square composition, it doesn't give you square tiles. Instead, it subdivides your image into a specific number of rows and columns. Now, obviously this is gonna present a challenge when it comes to lining up a square pattern exactly with these mosaic tiles. But luckily we can use the power of expressions to solve just that kind of problem. So let's drop down the mosaic controls and on the horizontal blocks, give this little timer and alter option option click to create an expression. And I'm gonna type in this comp dot width divided by, and then I'll use the pick whip and drag it to the block size slider. Okay, so this is giving us the width of the composition, 1920 divided by 10, 192 blocks wide. Or if I bring the block size up to 50, then we've got 1920 divided by 50, which is 38.4, but the mosaic effect is always gonna to round to the nearest whole number. So we've got 38 horizontal blocks. So this block size is actually gonna be a measurement of how many pixels wide each mosaic tile is, because this math equation basically asks how many 50 pixel tiles can fit in a 1920 pixel image? And the answer is 38. Okay, then we're gonna need an expression on the vertical blocks as well. And this one is gonna be this comp dot height divided by, and I'll pick whip this to the block size as well. So this one asks how many 50 pixel tiles can fit in 1080 pixels? And the answer is 21.6, but again, mosaic is gonna round that to 22. So now when I drag up the block size, the mosaic effect is gonna give us as close to square blocks as it can while maintaining a whole number of rows and columns. So again, these are not actually perfect squares, but they're as close as we're gonna get with the mosaic effect. So we've got our mosaic effect. Next, let's drop this single pattern tile in here and I'm gonna rename this Pixelate Pattern. And the first thing I wanna do is drop down the transform controls and set the position to zero, zero and the anchor point to zero, zero. And that kind of pins this thing to the top left corner. If I scale it up and down, it's kind of all measured from that one spot. 
Now this pattern tile is 100 pixels wide, which is nice because the scale is then also just a measurement of how many pixels wide it is. 100% is 100 pixels wide, 250% would be 250 pixels wide. And we want the scale of the pattern to match a single one of these mosaic tiles. So it seems like we could just pick whip the scale to that block size. But because the mosaic effect is not perfectly square and the pattern is a perfect square, it's sort of lining up, but not really. We're really starting to see where a mosaic is not giving us perfect squares. So we're going to have to get a little bit more sophisticated with the expression on the scale of this pattern tile. So let's think about how many pixels wide exactly is one of these mosaic tiles right now? Well, the composition is 1920 pixels wide and there are 14 blocks. So each tile is going to be the width of the comp divided by however many horizontal blocks there are. So the expression can be just that. It'll be this comp dot width divided by and then I'll pick whip this to the horizontal blocks value. Now the scale property needs two values, the X and the Y. So we need a comma and then we need a formula for the Y scale. And this will be this comp dot height divided by, and then I'll pick whip to however many vertical blocks there are. And then important for this to be formatted correctly, we need an open bracket at the very beginning of this thing and a closed bracket at the end. Okay, let's try that out. Pretty cool, the power of mathematics, this pattern is matching perfectly with the mosaic tiles. But we only have one tile, so we need to use an effect to repeat it, to tile it out and fill in the whole image. For the moment, I'm gonna bring the opacity down so we can see the pattern and the background, and I'm gonna use the repetile effect. And the question is, how far do we need repetile to expand this to the right to fill out the composition? You'd think, well, the comp is 1920 wide, so this could be 1920 pixels. Or if we want to be fancy, we can use an expression for that and say this comp dot width 1920. But right now, the scale of this layer is down at 37%. So it's scaling down the repetile effect also, meaning we need to compensate for whatever the scale is at the moment. And we could do it like this. We need an expression that says this comp dot width times, and then in parentheses, 100 divided by, and I'll pick whip to the horizontal scale value. So now that's always gonna make Repetile add the entire width of the comp, even if this layer is scaled down. Now, if we wanted to be really thorough so that Repetile is not adding an extra tile every time, we could also include minus width, and that's gonna subtract the width of that original tile. Okay, expand down is gonna be almost the same, but it'll go this comp dot height times parentheses 100 divided by pick whip to the scale vertical value, close parentheses minus height. All right, that ought to do it. Let's bring the opacity on this layer back up to 100 and switch it over to hard mix and check out how that looks. Okay, looking cool, the effect is working and we can start to dial it in. We do have some areas where the mosaic blocks are going solid white and that's only gonna happen when the underlying layer is full blast white. So what I'm gonna do here is add an adjustment layer down here just with a levels effect. And it's gonna be below the pixelate pattern. I'll call it pixelate levels, use a levels effect and just take the white output down a little bit. We can use this levels to really dial in how much contrast we want in those pixels, how bright the blacks are and everything. So we've basically got our pixel shapes, but there is one more bridge to cross before we give this some green glowy color. Because right now, this is cool. We can adjust the mosaic size. We've got these nice close-up pixel effects. But if the block size gets too small, we run into an issue. And what's happening here is that this pattern tile is scaled way down right now to 5%. So it's only five pixels wide. And then Repetile is trying to fill in thousands and thousands of pixels. And Repetile hits its max at 20,000 pixels. So we just can't fill up the whole frame. Long story short, the scale on this layer is just too small. So I'm gonna make an adjustment to this expression on the scale property. On the horizontal scale part of this, I'm gonna add times four. And then on the vertical scale part, add times four. So now rather than being 5%, this layer is scaled up to 20% and Repetile is able to fill in the whole frame. However, the pattern is now four times too big. So what I'm gonna do is add one more effect in here, the CC Tyler effect. I'm gonna move this effect up so that it hits before the Repetile effect and I'll change the center point on the effect to zero, zero. 
then it seems like we need to go to 25% on this effect. But for whatever reason, CC Tyler is always exactly 1% off. So we actually need to be at 26%. Don't ask me why. But now we've got the same look without scaling this layer down quite so far. And if we want, we can make the pattern tiles really, really small. Side note, you might be tempted to use CC Motion Tile to do the same thing. CC Motion Tile can tile things and expand them. But Motion Tile, especially down at these tiny sizes, gets really, really heavy. It takes a long time to calculate each frame and it introduces a whole bunch of other problems. So I don't recommend it. OK, let's take the block size to maybe 8 or 10. And then actually, I can even set a keyframe here so that when we get this close up shot, the blocks get bigger. Maybe it'll go to 20. Let's take a quick look at that in motion. Looking cool. Let's get into some final effects. I'm going to put another adjustment layer on here and call this one pixelate wide time. So right now, each of these little pixels can light up and then turn off instantly. But I'm going to use the CC wide time effect and super subtle. I'm going to set forward steps to zero and backward steps to two. And that's going to create just a little bit of an echo. I'll even bring the opacity on this adjustment layer down to 50%. It's a little detail, but it feels a little bit more like an imperfect cathode ray monitor that takes just a moment to cool down. OK, let's add another adjustment layer for some glow effects. So first of all, I just want to blur everything a little bit. And in this case, I really like the look of fast box blur instead of Gaussian blur. It's a little bit more linear, kind of preserves some of the horizontal and vertical details, but it can be down at like 0.2. And then, of course, some glow. I'm going to bring the radius up to 20 and the intensity down to 0.6. And then let's add another glow. This one, the radius up at 80 and also intensity 0.6. All right, then let's give it some color. And I'm going to do this on another adjustment layer by itself, just so it's easy to find and adjust. And I really like this CC toner effect. And on this tritone setting, it seems to give you just enough control to dial in a color palette that's not just a single hue, but has a little bit of variation in it. I'm making these colors get just a little bit warmer as they get darker. And I'll even take the shadows value here, the blacks, and lift those up so that even the blackest black is a little bit green. Then more effects. Let's create an adjustment layer for grain and sharpen. A lot of you guys probably know my noise and grain simple recipe. Just a little bit of noise, maybe 3%, then a Gaussian blur at 2, and that makes the noise not quite so sharp. Although I am going to add one effect to sharpen everything right back up, the unsharp mask. Bring the amount up to 100, and I'll bring the radius up to 2. Pretty subtle difference, especially for YouTube, but it does help to give the image a little bit more definition. OK, finally, as I mentioned at the very beginning, we've been previewing this at 12 frames per second since I have the preview set to skip one frame. But before rendering anything, I'm going to want to add an adjustment layer with the posterized time effect. And I'm going to punch in 12. And that's going to hold each frame for two frames and create that low frame rate look, even though we're in a 24 frames per second comp. All right, well, that is the whole thing. It's been a journey, but the fun part is actually trying some animation and some footage with these layers on top. Don't forget, you can skip all of the labor and download this template I created with a custom controller to access all these properties in one place. Makes it easy to add keyframes to all the details. There are a few extra features in here, two different styles of displacement, and of course, these 15 pattern styles. Definitely worth checking out. I'd love to turn this into a plugin at some point. So if you're watching this in 2024, maybe check up on me and see if I did that in the future. In any case, hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.